Our final demo of the day is Kylan, who will be giving a demo um, from Imworld AI on how folks are using LLMs to actually change video games and fundamental gameplay mechanics. Thank you, Kylan. Thank you so much. It's been a crazy week. GDC, GTC, gaming is hot right now. Um, so uh, I'm excited to show what I'm going to be sharing is actually a, a demo of an actual game that's kind of going live now. So um, just for a quick preview for those who aren't familiar, um, basically Imworld is a kind of end-to-end -end vertically integrated platform specifically for gaming. Uh, you know, CJ was mentioning developers are hard to work with. Game developers are really hard to work with. They are both technically savvy and also extremely creatively want a lot of control. So basically we have an engine that actually drives a lot of the experiences at runtime and it connects to anything like Unreal or Unity and actually drives the behavior by taking in the game state and then putting that out. We have a studio that actually is actually how you craft um, and augment existing game development using AI. Uh, and we have a core solution. So a lot of the challenges that I think lots of folks here are encountering Games want to run locally. They want you know no, no latency and all those kinds of things, and so we're solving for that. And what I'll be showing here today is actually mainly a demonstration of the engine component of that. So we we did, this week launched with uh, an experience with Nvidia, a partnership with Microsoft and their studios uh, called Project Explora, and we released an early experience of a game uh, working with Ubisoft. So I'll be showing a video of the Ubisoft experience. So the main thing I guess is you know games have always been one of those places where people are super excited to. Uh, apply AI, but it's really hard because the controls that you have to put in place need to actually be beholden to what the narrative designers and writers of the games actually want to do. And so in this video, first you'll see sort of a, a conversational dynamic where they've added on game design elements that are actually kind of making the dialogue more engaging. So it's not just a chatbot experience, but it actually fits within what you feel like a gamer should be a gamified type of experience. So we'll start with that and then we'll pause and I'll explain the next parts. So what is this resistance? When did it form? Like why do we even not like these mega corps? Like I like, you know, eating burgers. I see, okay. Our resistance has been around for years, fighting against the oppression of these mega corps who exploit resources for their own greed. Plus, with our sabotage missions, we can provide a satisfying outlet for your skills while also fighting for a greater cause. But enough about us. What about your burger preference? <laughs> Uh, ah, the classic case of burgers versus revolution. Who needs justice and equality when you can have a juicy burger instead? Time to rethink <laughs> your priorities, my friend. Well, for me, it's personal. Seeing my home and the world I love destroyed by their actions has fueled my passion to fight back. But as a team, we can make a bigger impact and take down these corporations for good. And who knows? Maybe we'll celebrate with some burgers after a successful <laughs> mission. Oh my gosh. Okay, I love it, Bloom. Absolutely love it. Let's do it. That's what I like to hear. Insulting him? Okay. Welcome okay. to the resistance, Nelson. Let's make some history. <laughs> and maybe later we can grab some burgers and toast to a successful mission. So a few things that I just want to point out here is because everybody here is very familiar with AI. Um, the key things is, you know, of course, we can do updates to emotional states, relationship dynamics, all those things in the back end. But what we realized for game studios specifically is actually how we expose those is super important to kind of give the idea of progression. Because if you're just doing all of that in the back end, they ultimately don't care. So it's how we expose them. Kind of mapping that with game design is actually what allows it to come to life. Okay, team, the new drones in the air. Let's oh, check out okay, how it, Shadows it, yeah. does with this recon mission. Since it's your first rodeo, don't be shy. Shoot any questions my way, all right? So Shadow, the hurry up. The target is in sight, but so we Shadow, have to act up. That guard might see us. any more guards show up. Let's hack that laptop and get out of here. Yes! <laughs> Success! The drone has successfully hacked into the laptop and is downloading the map as we speak. Now we just need to get out of there before anyone realizes what's happened. Watch out, there's a guard. Watch out! Don't worry, we got this. Just keep an eye out for any other guards and let me know if you see anything suspicious. We're almost there! Hey Bloom, how tall do you think that guard is? <laughs> Around eight. 
Oh no, it got shot. Got that though, around six feet. That's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so there as well, because we're, you know, we're, we have to use a lot of these models in parallel. And so it's super challenging when you're putting together the voice, the multimodal input, all those different things. So large models don't necessarily work there. And so it ends up being a series of a lot of models that are running in parallel to effectively process that and then send the signals to the ultimate prompt. So we've got- And in this case, you'll see the actual dynamic game state as well. So it's not just changing the character dynamics, but actually dynamically changing the actual game state itself by triggering different things on the UI. For the first step, the only way to enter the building without triggering an alarm of any sort is through the window of the gallery on the second. Well, for the entry point, the best option is to access the gallery's window on the second floor from the outside. But the obstacle is, we'll need a ladder to reach it. What do you think? I don't know if that's the best option. Why do you think that's the best option? Because the other sides of the villa are heavily guarded and monitored by cameras. Plus, Shadow's intel showed that the guard in the lot is our biggest threat. We can't risk being seen or heard, so we have to be strategic. Any ideas? I see that you got a, a grappling hook. Why'd you not decide to do that one? That one looks pretty cool. You know, hmm. you're right. That could work. We could use the grappling hook to access the gallery's window. Good call, Nelson. Let's go with that plan. And a lot of what we're doing here as well is actually generating quests on the fly. And so effectively, we're able to actually produce new quests that are dynamically generated based on the interactions that the player has, and then basically grounding those in the goals that they have. And so the fun of what we're building is we get to bring together basically everything that's, you know, consistently coming out of research, but applying that with a user who has very specific needs and creative vision. So yeah, super fun, check us out, and if you're interested in games or, or applying your technologies to games as well, we're always looking for partners. Thank you.